guys, what's up? It's me, Fangbanger. In this video, I'm going to be bringing you my 100th video. That is right, I have now made a 100 videos. And I didn't really know what I should do on this, and I decided, you know, I kind of like, I do question and answers, so I answer your questions, I do vlogs, and they're always just random and usually about video games, and then I play and talk about a lot of video games, but I don't really get to, I guess, get too personal with y'all and let y'all, I guess, know anything, like, really far into detail about me. Um, so I decided, you know, maybe I should do something like a life lessons type thing where I kind of like make videos sometimes and I really give you some life, or life lessons that I've learned um, growing up and I've had quite a few so it might get kind of interesting. I decided to do probably one of the biggest ones though in this video and I'm going to have a FIFA game going on during it depending on how long I actually run on with the story. I guess then the FIFA game will either be like really short or it'll be a long game. You might see a full game. So I'm just going to put a random ultimate team game on there and a new team that I built today. And hopefully you'll enjoy my life lesson story. And I decided to name this video, My Life Could Be Different. Or I guess I'm going to name it something like My Life Could Have Changed. I don't know. FIFA 13. <laughs> While I'm doing it. So if you get bored of the story, at least watch the gameplay because I'm freaking awesome. I might not be though. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to take you all back in a time machine back in the day this is a life lesson learned for me that could have changed my life possibly forever and I'm gonna be in this time at least I think I was 15 years old no I'm for sure I was 15 years old because it's the only way the story would make sense I was 15 years old and when I was 15 because of the fact that both my dad and my stepmom worked really late hours um, and they weren't home very often they're really both hard workers which is why they're so successful and i hope to be like them someday although i don't like working as much as they do it seems like um they actually got me a car when i was 15. and it was not like the best car it was a i think a 1996 rodeo isuzu rodeo candy apple red had to put a grill guard on it i'd already wrecked a vehicle before that happened just practicing driving so they weren't too happy about trying to get me a new car they got me like the oldest thing they could that like ran and they wanted to make it pretty much unbreakable so they put all this stuff on it so it was funny but it was like the first car and i was pretty much like the second one out of my friends to even have a car and so everyone was excited about that because meryl had a car but she had like a little jetta and nobody could fit it in this i could fit everybody in it it could fit like four people in the back one in the front and then there was a very sto like storage back that it could fit even more people in, which I shouldn't have been doing, but, you know, it was high school, so I did it anyway. So I got this car. I'm 15. I'm one of the only ones in my grade that has a vehicle, and this is a big deal. I have a hardship license because my dad owns his own business as well. So he was able to say that I worked for him, and somehow we, like, finagled a hardship license. So I got to drive to school and everything. I did have a curfew, though, and a hardship license. You could have nobody in the vehicle unless it was your family members, um, mother or father. You couldn't have a brother or sister, and you had to be in at 9 o'clock on this license. So unless you got extended, like if you worked late hours, but I didn't, obviously. So I had a hardship license, and I'm in high school. I am a fret no, sophomore, not a freshman, a sophomore. And this is like the beginning of sophomore year, the weekend. We've been having like house parties and stuff like that. I was kind of got into, I guess, the partying and the drinking type thing kind of at a young age because at least in my area in my high school, that was like with a popular thing. I did not do drugs though. This is all drinking. But um, so we're looking for a party spot one weekend and nobody can have a house party. Everybody's parents are there or not in town or something's happening. And we have no idea what to do. And so I start thinking and I'm like, my dad, you know, he owned his own business. He has um, a bunch of horses and, like, ponies, and he sends them out, like, during the year. Certain times of the year, they get sent out with my uncle, and they go to, like, rodeos and stuff like that. So he, uh, he's, he sends them out, and he's got this land in the middle of Fort Worth, which is a, a big city. There's, it's, there's a lot of people there, so you don't usually see, like, a bunch of land in the middle of it. But somehow, luckily, my dad has this land, and it's, like, seven or eight acres where all of them were. And my uncle lives on it normally, but he's not there. And so there's like a kind of a caretaker type of person there, <laughs> which is my dad's friend. And his name's Homeboy. That's not his real name. That's what we always call him, Homeboy. And so I'm um, like thinking about him like, hey, guys, like, why don't we why don't we try going to my dad's land? Like we could take everybody out there. It's literally the most epic piece of land possible for being in the middle of a city, because not to mention, is it just like huge? in a big open space, but it also has trees surrounding the entire thing. So if like a, a police officer or somebody wanted to look in there, you, can, you could possibly hear in there, but you can't see what's going on inside of this area. And so I'm like, oh, this, is, this will be an awesome idea. So like I'm thinking, how am I gonna get in there? He locks up the gates whenever my uncle goes out of town. 
or he did at the time. And so I'm like, maybe, <laughs> maybe I talked to Homeboy and maybe he won't mind because he was kind of a rebel anyway. So I talked to Homeboy and I'm like, Homeboy, you think I can get the keys to that gate um, to get in here? Because me and my friends, you know, we just want to have a good time. And Homeboy's like, yeah, man, totally, man. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So I get the keys from Homeboy, which is totally bad of him. My dad would have been so mad at him. And keep in mind, my parents are extremely strict. I mean, so strict, like, I uh, couldn't wear makeup until I was in high school. Uh, couldn't have a boyfriend until I was 16. Didn't want me to drive until I was 18. That did not happen because obviously they needed me to drive. Um, just a bunch of things. I had a curfew at like 10 o'clock all the way through high school, even like 11 when I was coming back from college. So they're really strict in the first place. So if my dad were to know I'm here, it would have been hell. But somehow I decide this is a good idea. I'm 15 years old, so I think this is a good idea. And so I'm just bringing, you know, all these people out there and it's like nighttime it's probably 10 o'clock we literally like line up in rows of cars which is like cool you're like trying to be like the cool person in high school i know everyone wants to do it and they're like oh there's just not one time you're gonna throw that epic party well I'm, i hit this moment this epic moment in high school um where i had the epic party which is hell complete hell if you have to throw it because then you have to worry about everybody and it's your land and you have to worry about if your parents find out and if somebody gets hurt, like I didn't think about it at the time, but it's so on you and you're so screwed if somebody gets hurt. But anyway, so we, we line up, we drive through Fort Worth in our little car row. We all get into uh, what we decided to call because of the reason that it was there, Pony Ranch, all through high school. This was not my only party there that I had there. It was my first, but it was probably the worst experience. But anyway... Pony Ranch. We show up. We drive into Pony Ranch. Open up the gates. Everybody goes in. We got big trucks. All the guys in high school. I live in Texas, so everybody had like Tahoes or big Chevy trucks, pretty much, or big Fords. And so we get in there, and we find like an area. I'd kind of like rode my go kart through there a lot growing up and stuff, but I didn't really pay attention. There was this like concrete area, which looked like it used to be like a stage. I don't know what was there before my dad had it. But it was like a stage, and uh, we like circle the trucks around that, and it's awesome, and it's perfect, and you know we have a good time. That night it didn't get too out of hand. I think it might have got a little loud. I don't think we were always worried that like cops were driving by because the area that it was in is like a big known area for cops. But we didn't. Nothing ended up happening, and so we have a great time. I get a little schnockled. I'm just gonna let you know, I got a little schnockled. But we had a plan. Me and my friends did. I went there. Um, I'm thinking about, I guess, putting a picture up so you can visualize it. I went there, though, and me and my four friends were the ones driving. And it was me, it was my best friend growing up, who you'll always hear about, Sydney, um, who we just get, we seem to get in, like, the worst trouble in. I don't know why. It just happens when we get together. And then there was Aaron and Eve. So um, we're all together. We planned, you know, me, Eve, and Sydney are going to be able to drink. Aaron wasn't that big of a drinker at the time. And so she was going to drive, even though she didn't have a license. We thought it was, oh, yeah, we, she's going to drive. And for some reason, Eve's mom, like, let us stay out late. And so we were going to, I think our curfew was, like, 1 o'clock. And so I was like, all right, that's that's cool. Then we'll just drink or whatever. And so I, and I got schnockled off, like, smearing off ice because that was what was cool back then, which was terrible. Another life lesson in the middle of this lesson, don't drink smearing off. It makes your, like, stomach turn on the inside so badly. It's just, like, painful. But, uh did that and we pretty much end the night we're we're leaving everything goes fine with pony ranch there's other horror stories that have happened there i might bring to you but everybody's fine and we're leaving and i get in the back seat my car at the time was decorated it was homecoming week so like decorated the girls and the guys like to like secretly whenever you weren't there like you were in class or something they would come decorate your car and so it was just had homecoming all over it Obviously, you're in high school. If it's like, yeah, homecoming, go heights, jackets, woo, number 32, you know, so you're, you're already standing out. And you have a curfew in Fort Worth anyway, even if you don't have a hardship license, it was like midnight. So I'm, we're driving, we all think it's a good idea. We drive out of there and I fall asleep in the back seat. I don't even think anything of it. We've got beer all over the back seat, like cans, or not cans, yeah, I guess it was cans, Keystone at the time. Uh, was what we had in there it was like a 30 pack and they were just kind of like fell out so they were all over the back seat they weren't open thank god but that doesn't even matter anyway because you shouldn't have them if you're that underage so it's all back there we're stupid and we start driving and we get to one of the main parts of Fort Worth like in the area that I grew up in and it's like one of the main roads 
and I'm sitting there like, we're driving, probably having a good time. I don't really know what's going on because I'm asleep. I can only imagine they're listening to. Let me play some songs that I imagine that we're listening to at this time. See if you can uh, remember any of these. Yeah, so that was totally that was that was what was cool in high school. Those songs. I mean, that's what me and the girls jammed to. So we're driving, we're listening to the music, and. Me, I wake up to like loud blaring music and cop sirens. And I'm like, what what the heck is going on? And you know, everybody's freaking out and like screaming in the car and I'm like, what is going on? And Aaron's in the front seat, she's like, Oh my god, oh my god, I'm I'm not sixteen yet, I'm not sixteen yet, I'm not gonna be able to ever get my license. No, oh my god, like scream freaking out. And I'm like, calm down, just calm down. And I'm like, don't don't worry about it, just climb back here. So in the middle of this police officer who's pulled us over we're pulled over in the middle of this street that is one of the main streets that anybody's parents who were on or anybody that was out would be on pulls us over next to the jack-in-the-box i'm not going to tell you the street because i don't want to get too into detail in my hometown okay i'll tell you camp buoy pulls us over in camp buoy next to the jack-in-the-box and <laughs> i'm we make the smart idea that maybe he can't see us so we're going to switch seats so on top of being pulled over already we switch seats i get in the front seat i am I'm hammered. I'm so stupid at this time. I'm just, I'm really drunk. And so he comes up to the car. And as he's coming up to the car, my friend next to me, and I believe even the friend in the back seat, Sydney next to me, and even the back seat, happened to see my other friend, Brittany, who is eating at the Jack in the Box that we're pulled over by. So they decide that they're going to hang out the window and scream like, I don't even, they're probably, I can only imagine them being like, hey, bitches like you know screaming at the other girls out the window and this cop's just walking up to us like i can already he probably was just like wow like Absolutely jackpot gold mine <laughs> and so i'm just sitting there like head down oh god this is gonna be terrible and he walks up and he comes to the, my window and he asks for license and registration i give it to him he takes it back to his car like they always do they gotta check everything out and i wait we'd wait we're sitting there like they're not even like scared because I guess they've been drinking. I think Aaron maybe was. She might have been crying in the back seat. But, and I'm just like, not even knowing what to think. I don't even know what's really going on. And he comes back, walks up to the window, and he looks at me. And then he brings his flashlight in, moves to the back seat, flashes it on everybody, flashes it down, sees all the beer cans, and he flashes my license and he says. You know you're not supposed to be driving past 9 o'clock, correct? That's what it says on your license. This is a hardship license. And I say, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be driving past 9 o'clock. And then he said, um, you know that you're under the age of 21, so you're not supposed to have beer. That's a minor in possession, correct? And I say, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm not even going to fight him. So I'm like, yeah, and I'm not supposed to have I'm not supposed to have that beer. And he said, um, I can tell that y'all are under the influence, so you know you're not supposed to be driving at all right now, even if you were 16, or you know the age or whatever. And I'm like, I'm just at this time like, oh my god. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I I know I'm not supposed to be driving right now. And he just like stares at me, and he's like. You know this could be really bad for you, and I'm like, yeah, this this is gonna be really bad for me. And in my mind, like as he says this, he's saying you know this stuff to me. I'm just thinking like I'm not even like thinking of the rest of my life. <laughs> like I'm I'm not even thinking of what how bad it could possibly be. The only thing I'm really thinking is like my dad is gonna be so pissed at me. Like all the rest of it is not even in there. I'm just so terrified of what my dad's gonna think because that's exactly how you feel. Like you don't think about the rest of your life whenever you're 15. And he stops for a second, he kind of looks off, you know, I guess he had to have like a thinking moment, and then he looks at me and he said, you know, I think I'm just going to follow you home. And as you can hear, like, that silence right there, I was just like, ep like epic, like, I didn't even know, I just stared at him for at least probably in my, in my mind it felt like two minutes but it was probably like 10 seconds and everybody else in the car was just mouth open and I was just like okay and so he walked back to his car he gave me my license registration back walked back to his car and I was just thinking like when I go back and I think about it 
like, he, he saved my life almost right there. Like, I could have had a DUI. I could have had, uh, you know, that's a felony. So I'd already had a felony on my record. I don't know if that, like, wipes off from the, depending on, like, what age you are. Could have had a DUI felony, minor, in possession, no license probably until I was, like, 30. Who knows? And my dad would have killed me from what I was thinking at that time. Um, and he just said he'd follow me home, which he risked a lot. I mean, he put his probably his career on the line there. He could have followed me home. I could have gotten a wreck on the way home because I'd... I'd obviously been drinking, even though we tried to set up a plane where a sober person would drive. I'd obviously been drinking. Um, you know, he gave up getting his bouncy count or whatever it would be for his tickets, you know, that I thought they'd get. Like, he he put a lot out there for me to not go to jail that day, and he did follow us home. He rode behind us the entire time, directly behind us. Um, I drove, I guess I sobered up, like, ridiculously, because I drove just amazingly. You know, I was definitely paying attention at that point. I got us home. We even pulled out. We got out of the car. And we uh, we expected him to come talk to Eve's mom. We knew he was going to. And we got out of the car. And he literally just, like, looked at us, waved, and drove on. And I was just like, wow. Like, that was probably one of the most, I guess, at any point, if you wonder, like, if you have any, I guess, belief in anything and you wonder if anything happens, there's got, there's got to be a reason that some things happen, I think. I mean, there had to be something or somebody looking out for me or just, I don't know, maybe it was just, like, luck. I don't know what it was, but that was probably the craziest night of my life. And I never, at that age at least, I never did that again to where I would possibly ever get in trouble like that. It scared me, you know to death to even think about it I did do a lot of other stupid things and th th you know I might bring some of those stupid things to y'all but uh yeah that was I guess a lesson learned on just doing just stupid things at that age just because you want to have a good time or you think you know you want to look cool or be cool you know sometimes you got to sit back and you got to look at the bigger picture and my life could have been ruined that day I could have I don't even know where I'd be right now if that was the case I don't know if I would have gotten to college. I probably wouldn't have got accepted to anywhere. You know, it just would have been really hard. I would probably not have a job until I was like, I don't know, 23, maybe. Because that's whenever you, it like goes off your record. I don't even know if it goes off your record. But it could have been terrible. And so um, if you're, I guess, ever in that situation, maybe hopefully you'll hear my story and you'll think about that. And you'll be like, you know, I don't think I want to end up even trying to go through what Fingerbanger went through. She almost peed herself multiple times during that car accident or car I guess it was an accident that car ride that sounds terrible we didn't get in an accident but uh yeah so that was my life lesson that I had at the age of 15 it's almost I guess nine years ago seems like just yesterday so I hope you enjoyed that story it was I guess really long so you might get to see a full game of FIFA I'm pretty sure you're going to and I hope you enjoy this game of FIFA. If you like this video, I guess, or if you like these ideas of my Fang Bangers life lessons or whatever, or lessons learned, definitely comment down below. If you got any crazy stories, I wouldn't mind hearing them down below either. Leave some comments. And until next time, get Fang Bang Nerds.